Today, I have a great honor of welcoming Desi on the podcast uh, or on this YouTube channel. And we're going to talk about her journey to Islam and different topics. So thank you so much, Desi, and your husband, Zain, for stopping by. Yeah. Alaikum salam. Thank you so much for the invitation to your channel. Yeah, definitely. So maybe just for people who are not familiar with you. So where are you from? Uh, are you from like... Eastern Europe, Western Europe, Southern Europe, and how, where do you live right now? Well, I was born in Lithuania in a really small town named Palanga. Uh, Lithuania is one of the three Baltic countries, for who could or know. And um, yeah, I was born there. And right now we are living here in South uh, Germany. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you live in Germany, but you can speak Spanish as well, right? So... Yes, correctly. I was living in, I was, I grown up in Spain. So that's oh, why, yeah. So you were just born in Lithuania, but you didn't really spend much time there? Or did you actually go to school there or? Well, I went to school until 12 years old, I was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, I moved my, with my family to Spain. Mm -hmm. And I studied there okay. in, Spain, in Spain. And then I moved also to Brazil. But now I'm living here in Germany. Yeah. So do you do you still know how to speak Lithuanian language? Like. Uh... Yes, I, I speak with my mother and, oh, okay. and my sister too. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, maybe I was thinking like because I'm from Slovakia and I mean it's not the same as Lithuania, but we have like similar history or let's say we are kind of like from the similar part of the world. So. Uh, what would you, what was the, I mean, probably you didn't really think about it, but when you were growing up, have you heard something about Islam? I know there are some Tatars in Lithuania maybe or something like this, but was it like almost nobody's Muslim? Like you, have you ever seen one? Because I haven't. So uh, maybe you can tell well, me. Well, in, Lithu in Lithuania, there are, I read the... Uh, um... Uh, mm, poco, uh, not so long ago. Yeah, I read not so long ago when I I was Muslim already because I was also curious to know how it's about Lithuania, if there's Muslims or not Muslims. Mm -hmm. And I read that there are like one percent of Tatars only. Yeah. And um, when I was um, a child, I only knew that um, in Lithuania were all Catholics a lot of Catholics, the majority, and also we had Orthodox because of the Russians and mm -hmm. the Soviets and everything. So I only met in real life um, just um, Orthodox and, and Catholics, nothing else. I never heard about any Muslims in there. No, <laughs> just mm -hmm. nothing. I, first I met a Muslim, it was in school in Spain. So yeah, it was from Morocco and Algeria but mm -hmm. nothing not much more yeah so my Are first you... contact with muslims was at 12 to uh, 30 like, something like that yeah mine was at 28 so it's still better <laughs> but uh <laughs> are you were you raised catholic or like atheists or no we were catholic my my family was catholic but we went only to church on christmas eastern and maybe sometimes my Grandma took me to church on Sundays, but nothing else. But I was also baptized. 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 <laughs> uh, before I went to um, Spain, my mom said, no, you must be baptized. If not, will happen something bad to you or some, you know, some stuff like that. Okay. <laughs> some dramas. So, yeah, that's why I was baptized, but I never went to church. I really have really bad experience with churches. I I don't really like that. Everything okay. that I saw in there, it wasn't really nice. Yeah. Are you, do you remember? Because from my experience, I was Catholic like 20 something years. So it's like, it's not like the main part of your identity. It's like something you do, like maybe on the side. It's not like full time. It's just like, you say this, but you, there's no meaning. It's just, you go to church, as you said, on Christmas, maybe. But there's nothing, it doesn't, your life is focused on maybe career or traveling. You don't care about religion because no one, I, at least all my family is Catholic, but it's not the main thing they are concerned. They, they don't think about it at all. 
Have you thought it like that? Like it was just kind of like a label, but you weren't all, always thinking like, okay, what about this? Uh, and kind of like, I didn't care about religion at all. when I was like Catholic, at least my experience. So I don't know if this was you or. Well, when I was really child, of course, I didn't read any Bible and anything. But when I was growing up, I I knew there's a God, but not this God of, from the church. <laughs> Um, that's why I also went to another church that's like Evangelic in, okay. in Brazil. In, in Brazil, it's more Evangelics, not Catholics that much, or at least in the city where I was living. So I went to that church, and of course, it was also something really strange for me. <laughs> I haven't really nice experiences from that where also. But um, I was... I was I wanted to know something about God, you know, so I re I really read the Bible and the Old Testament mm -hmm. both, but it was so contradictional to me, and I had so many questions about everything, about the life, why we are here, and, you know, a lot of things, mm -hmm. a lot of questions, and where were no answers to it. I didn't find that in the Bible or uh, any books that I read. So yeah, I would say I was trying to find something, but to um, at least all oh, well in my family we don't really. I I all, <laughs> it's so complicated. Sorry, I asked many questions to my family mm -hmm. um, about God and everything, and we just said no, it's it's there, it's it's okay, it's there, something like that, but no answers, you know. I why you ask me that? Why you ask me that? Leave me alone. No, so it will, I would say that my family doesn't really yeah, I think <laughs> search for answers. Many countries in Baltics, like I think Estonia is like fully atheist, like everyone. They don't even want to ask this because you can live life as atheists in Estonia and never question anything. Like it's not even something people ask, like just live your life and die. That's why do you exactly. keep asking this? <laughs> So it's like, yeah, this is like very strange for me as well. I was like, why do mm -hmm. people live like this? Not exactly. even. Exactly. Yeah. That, that was what I was thinking too. Why? But why? <laughs> yeah, it's strange. Because, yeah, but you were never atheist. You always kind of have some belief, but not really like formal, but you always had some, something. Well, yes, I was, at one moment, I was really mad to God because I get no answers. So I was like, what? Give me answers. So I was like, okay, so I'm believing you, but I'm not believing you, you know? So it's it was like maybe a little pequeña facet. Little pequeña. face. Yeah, but really yeah. little face. I was mad, but that's why I feel I thought I'm at ease, but I said no, no, I'm not. <laughs> Something strange. Yeah. Many people, when they leave Christianity, which happens a lot, they don't see any other op option because they are like, well, there's only one religion, Christianity. They don't really study anything else. And then they kind of like stuck are with like, okay, I believe in God, but it's not in Christianity. So I'll just live my life like this. So I'll be like just living because I know there's God, but I don't do anything about it. And this is like so many people because they see the problems with church. They're like, okay, this is clearly problematic. But they are like, okay, I'm just going to believe in God and do nothing about it. This is like so many people. Uh, I was also this, like, I came to conclusion, like, God exists, but I did nothing. Just like, okay, there's no religion because clearly all of them are made. It's all false. It's all fake. So I'll just do nothing, you know. And this is like such a problem because there's so many things you can explore, but uh, it takes time, you know, to learn um, you know different uh, different religions and uh, ideologies and stuff so yeah it's uh but this is like in europe typical at least from my experience you know because even atheists they kind of say i believe in something but they just don't formalize nothing they just kind of sit there <laughs> you know yeah oh uh, in brazil did you live in rio de janeiro or sao paulo or no no in espirito santo Vila Veia, vitoria okay. i okay. was in there nice yeah, I was in Rio for 10 days. It was crazy. Oh, nice. <laughs> but uh, in favelas, you know, in those uh, poor mm -hmm. neighborhoods, it wasn't that uh, that fun. Yeah, I remember it uh, really, really cool. So yeah. I was wondering, how did you guys uh, meet? Like, um, 
did you meet in Spain or Germany or Brazil or, or Lithuania or? <laughs> you can you can explain. So um, I also grew up in Spain, and uh, yeah, just grew up, became almost an adult, and I just realized that if I want to get better opportunities, uh, I'm still young, so I got to get out of the country. So I started learning German, and uh, she was learning German, so we were in the same class. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, she was also trying to go to Germany and me as well so you know we connected there and um, eventually we came to Germany in different places and uh, uh, we had our journey through life growing up learning stuff and uh, I'm a born Muslim okay um, it's a long story I don't know if you want to get into it but, <laughs> but uh, yeah she, she knew me we were friends uh, sometimes she would ask me questions I would answer to the best of my ability. And uh, mm -hmm. if I didn't have the answer, you know, research it because yeah, I just Google it and check out the sources, compare them, scrutinize them and uh, you get an answer. So this is more or less like, yeah, this is the way we, we dwelt into religion a little bit together. And eventually, you know, we were like, okay, we have an understanding of each other. We have now the same values and we see the life going to the same path and we got together. Okay. So are you born in Spain and born Muslim or how does that work? Um, I was born in Pakistan, mm -hmm. um, but I moved to Spain when I was three years old. So okay. I grew up in Spain, yeah. very Western environment. Um, I didn't have any Islamic community where I, where I was raised. I only had my siblings. We were six. So when you when you are six, <laughs> uh, the parents they cannot keep track of each one of you. So there's like a, like an environment where you're open to do whatever you want because the, the, your parents can't cope with it because you know the parents gotta provide, they gotta <laughs> raise you, and they gotta you know. And you're six, so you know everybody takes a different path. Mm -hmm. So because the lack of lack of um, like a community, lack of uh, parents watching over you all the time. Uh, I was Muslim all my life. I knew this. Um, I didn't know in depth. Like I learned to read the Quran when I was little. But I cannot recite it beautifully like many uh, people can. So, you know, like I, I had the basics, but I didn't, you know. So that was more like my upbringing. Yeah. Did you, because I know in Spain, there's like, uh, great, uh, you know, great uh, history in Grenada or in like uh, Cordoba. And there are Muslims in and Muslim community, like 5% of Spain, I think it's like, uh, like Muslims. So did you then start spending some time? I don't know in which city, in Madrid or whatever, but there must be like. I, was, right? I was, I was raised near Barcelona okay. and um, from my kindergarten to my primary school. I was the only non-white child in that school. <laughs> yeah. No, wait, not in the school, but in my class. And uh, hence also the only non-Christian slash atheist. So okay. when you're a child, you just go to school, you know, and then you hit the park and in the park, uh, school friends. So when I got to high school, I did meet other Muslims, Moroccans, and mm -hmm. I knew about Senegalese people being Muslim because there's a lot of Senegalese uh, you know where Senegal is and yeah, yeah. you know okay so Senegalese people we had neighbors so I had a little bit of contact but at that time you just like you know things but you don't have any idea at the same time like you're told like hey you're Muslim you know you told the Shahada you told that you cannot eat pork you told that you cannot uh, drink alcohol that you cannot be with girls before you get married you told all that but you don't really know the religion because they just told you like like the the core and mm -hmm. for some people that's enough but for me that was not enough <laughs> because uh, like it's like i think it, it's like god chooses you to really seek out that knowledge whether you're a muslim or you're not a muslim you know there's a lot of christians like you guys were just speaking right now that they just say they're christians but like they don't really practice it and like maybe it's a couple of times a year or every sunday but it's within that frame and for Muslims, I think that this is also the case, not as often, but I can only speak about Muslims in the West. 
I don't know how Muslims in non-Western countries sleep. You know, I haven't had that life. Um, but in the West, it's it's a little bit like that. But we're I think we're still more religious than the uh, Christians and atheists around us. So yeah. when yeah. I got in contact with some Moroccans, coming back to your question, um, I saw a lot of Moroccan girls wearing hijab. But at the same time, these were the girls that, you know, had the worst reputation, even worse than others. Mm -hmm. And then there were other girls that they had like good reputation. Like there was everything. Like then I met some Moroccans that couldn't even read Arabic. And that was really strange for me because I could and I'm not an Arab. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they couldn't read the Arabic. And I was I was so puzzled. Like, why? <laughs> so this was more or less my, my contact with other Muslims in Spain. But there's a lot, like you said, um, around where I was growing up, like metropolitan area of Barcelona. There was no mosque per se. Mm -hmm. We had these small dark rooms yeah. where you could go pray. And I went to one that was close to our home on special occasions. Unfortunately, I was not pious enough to go there as as I could have. But I did went to some of them. And when we went to a Muslim country and we saw the real mosques, uh, I just wanted to move to a Muslim country. I was like, <laughs> from that dark room to this. Mm -hmm. I was like, I wish I could live here, you know, inshallah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's the same. I I converted like almost two years ago and I was in Prague, Czech Republic, which is like completely atheist. And there we had dark rooms as well, like around city center, like underground. Um, and it's like, you know, you have to go out of your way to go and pray and like it's and drunk people everywhere and everything. And then I went to like Turkey or different countries and it's like, subhanAllah, it's like completely different. <laughs> like uh, they have mosque and even in Turkey and Istanbul, they say like Shahada on top of the mosque, like La ilaha illallah on the, the blue mosque and the, the Hagia Sophia. And I was like, whoa, that's crazy. Like to say this on top of this to be like, uh, you know, uh, I'm not hiding it. Sorry, like not hiding it like it's not yeah. like um like it's open yeah yeah so and i'm a revert i'm not even born muslim you know i don't have any connection to the religion unless i had some knowledge but i have no family nothing so but for me it's also like uh really cool and uh, yeah it doesn't make sense to just i don't know raising children might be difficult to just give them the rules maybe that's easier but if they don't have the understanding of tawhid that's all pointless because like you will not obey those rules you will obey the rules once you understand who is allah but if you don't know this then you know it's like another thing you need to do and you know why am i not eating pork why am i doing this you know it's like doesn't make sense so even if you look at the sirah or how the quran was revealed it started with tawhid with allah it started with teaching about the oneness and that's all no rules and then the rules came once people had uh, you know iman and faith then they can obey the rules because they know why but i think that's kind of the way you need to teach it to kids um, i don't know i don't have any yet but i figure it's gonna be like this maybe i'm wrong so no, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, you got to really teach the children like actively as, as best as of your ability. Every family is different. They have some different circumstances. But we don't have children. But if we have children, inshallah, we're going to teach them better than at least, you know, I know from my experience, you know, from from a lineage of Muslims, you know, in the end, people like they just become laid back. I think especially at this day and age where where especially for Muslims living in the West, uh, the, the children like we were kids you know we, we know who it is so you can get strayed like you can go to the wrong path very easily you really gotta I mean you don't gotta have to be on them all the time but you gotta be more proactive than like I said for western Muslim families at least my family I know there are some really pious uh, and learned people in the west you know Sheikh Uthman Muhammad Hijab they were raised in the west you know but they're really really learn but this is not uh the standard so you know we got to work on that inshallah yeah so i was wondering uh, desi so how did so you were learning about islam together and stuff so when why when did you decide to convert like how did that happen 
do you do you had like a specific moment or like okay i now understand everything like or because it's always like weird this uh this shahada so well i researched for more religions like judaism buddhism um hinduism also mm -hmm. i also read something about orthodox and <laughs> almost all the religions before yeah. i came to islam and um even we weren't we didn't met yet so i was searching for all these religions before oh nice and um then of course um i knew that he is muslim so i was like okay so what is this about and i was starting to ask him so many questions uh, but too many mm -hmm. <laughs> also really um uh, like stupid questions like really stupid yeah. <laughs> there are no stupid <laughs> because questions. i had so much so many you know yeah i had maybe a thousand questions that i wanted to know about allah about the everything everything at all so everything you know like everything possible to know you know yeah. everything that you you will have a curiosity yes. about and yeah so he was trying to um answer to me all these questions but still i i was i wasn't thinking like okay i'm going to revert no way mm. <laughs> i just wanted to know more and more and um well, many things happened, many, many years have passed, uh, and um, I went to Turkey, Istanbul. Nice. <laughs> so there I found in Hagia Sophia where were so many books. Of course, I took all in Spanish, not in English, <laughs> because English I didn't know at all. Um, so I took many books of, um, yeah. in Spanish. So when I came home uh, after work, I always was reading, reading, reading. And I was like, wow, so many questions answered. <laughs> so really, this religion makes sense. Not that other religions that I couldn't get with answers. And for me, it was really important. And I was, after so many questions answered, I was already feeling like a Muslim. But of course, I didn't know that I had to took shahada. <laughs> Mm -hmm. so once i knew it i did it <laughs> but yeah it wasn't so easy to know that ah okay i must take shahada so, yeah was... yeah but there's so many so there's such a small number of people who do this who actually want to learn like it's really i can count on one hand like most people don't want to learn nothing so it's like once you start this learning at least and that moment you're open and that's great but most people never want to learn so like most people don't even want to talk about this so uh, exactly. so this is like great sign if someone's actually like already learning like within a few years he's gonna bump into islam or he's gonna learn something so um and it's funny like islam is like both like very simple like just like okay there's just one god and then the quran and all that but it's very complicated at the same time it can get like very complicated and in-depth like especially looking at the hadiths or anything basically any topic in islam can be very deep so it's for both like uh, people who are like uh, amateur let's say like me <laughs> or or scholars they can like dive very deep in just arabic like it's so complicated so uh, so that's great about uh, about it that People don't have to be scholars to embrace Islam, but they uh, it's religion for all. Like it, it doesn't matter if you're in the forest and you don't know how to read, it still makes sense. Or if you're like an academic professor, they still convert as well. You know, it's like, how is this possible? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I was wondering, uh, so then when did you start your YouTube? Or like, you know, you do a lot of like, I think reaction videos, right? And this uh, and some traveling uh, videos. So, how did you go about this? Well, maybe you could explain <laughs> how it started. So, um, yeah, we were during COVID. We were thinking like we were to go for vacation, mm -hmm. and um, went to Turkey. And Turkey was open during COVID. They didn't have these restrictions. As well, yeah. So we went there and and uh, I thought like like because this was my idea actually to start a channel 
because I see that there is always this this semantics connotations this this like like um, ingrained like like people like they have this um, bad image like like Turkey is like the most liberal Muslim country it's, it's even not a Muslim country as far as legislation yeah. and governmental structure goes you know and they still hate it. <laughs> I mean, not to everybody. I'm, I'm not talking about like a blanket hate from everybody from the West, but like, like there's this this media, like you know. I just I, and then then the the bloggers they go there and they're like, oh wow, these people are civilized, you know. <laughs> these people uh, are not savages. Um, well, they they look white even, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like. Can please some blogger go there and like be natural and not giving them like a pat on the back like hey you did a good job I thought you were like really trash but not bad good food security and I was like just go there and be a normal person make a blog for normal people people that want to travel not go there and say mm, government repression but then this and then that eh, they, they're not bad you know I give my approval here is my approval the Western approval you know I was. Because I think everything a little bit very political. I was like, can somebody please go there and, and like make a normal blog? Yeah. I was like, since we're gonna go and we've never been to Turkey, I was just gonna go and film and and like like give a normal view of doing normal things for tourists and not this social political, geopolitical travel blogger that goes there, you know. So this was my idea. But um in the end, uh, we were not traveling as much as we liked, and uh, I'm not that such good of a YouTuber, so <laughs> at least back then. So my wife, she uh, overtook it, and um, she was also, she became Muslim, alhamdulillah, and she, she felt like what I have found is also worth sharing. So like, I think, I'm assuming here, but I think the same as you. Like you gotta share this like this is the absolute truth you know like when you have found something so precious and even when you're born muslim and then you become conscious and aware of the research you know you seal it like you know like this is it like alhamdulillah i was born into it but now that i've grown that i developed my mind that i compare things that i you know travel around and i see all these things and i'm aware of all this stuff you're like this is it you know so I told my wife, I encouraged her, like, look, there are many people that uh, will identify with you. And uh, this is a fact. People <laughs> might like it or not. You know, you, you're born the way you are. People will identify with you. And um, she also likes to have this as a hobby. Like, this is actually a hobby. <laughs> I really she, like it. She, she's, I love it. <laughs> she's going to learn Islam. This is a long process. Like, you can learn until you die. This is, this is a, especially depends on your pace, but like, it's a lifelong journey and we were like you're going to be learning this every day so why not when you learn it you show it and inshallah this will inspire people it will share knowledge to people make it more accessible make it more um like um, yeah like people identify with her you know like i don't know from lithuania or western people stuff like that so like you can appeal to them like hey um i did it there is a reason i did it so maybe you should check out why i did it you know and maybe allah will give you um consciousness of 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 the deen of islam and you get to the truth so yeah. more or less that's the story why and how it started yeah and i try to do it daily because um i don't know if there's a hadith that you said to me but uh, Allah says that we must learn daily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, think. yeah. So that's why I'm, I'm trying to, to do daily videos that everyone, you know, it's, it's very important to learn daily. It's hadith of the mm -hmm. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you gotta learn, like you have to have this hunger for knowledge. And uh, the people that have this hunger for knowledge, whether they're Muslim or not Muslim, like this comes from Allah, you know, this is, these people are like in a way chosen because you have that fire in you that you know i want to know more like it's not enough i need to know like there is a need and you have to fulfill it mm -hmm. so yeah and also <laughs> we are you human so we also forget everything maybe not today or not tomorrow we will forget forget it but we forget things so mm -hmm. 
you know what I mean? It's really important also to maybe remind remind um, people. Yeah. yeah, remind remind remind, remind people. Remind people. I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah, that's why. Yeah, no, that's that's true. And uh, with regards to traveling and being like a Westerner, I think you understand. But like the image of Islam, like just from my family and everyone is like they're all terrorists. So suicide bombers. So like, this is like what people are brought up with. This is fed to them. So you have to understand when you, when you see maybe these bloggers, they have this in their mind. You know, this is like from the birth, on TV, on internet, all the time. Just like, women are oppressed in hijab. This, this, and never any single one positive thing about Islam. Never. So it's even my family today, not today, but like they make jokes. I I went to the wedding of my cousin and they were like, I had the suit and they were like, Jan, are you strapped? Are you strapped? Where are the bombs? You know, making kind of like jokes. And I'm just like, I know what they're thinking and I'm not offended. I'm a very like, I like humor and comedy and like, I don't care. Even if they said whatever, I, I'm not going to be offended. You can call me whatever. So I just make, made jokes. No worries. I left it home. So I'll blow up something okay. else. So it's like, you know, you got to make it like this because they have to see like, okay, this is complete nonsense, but I get it because I used to think exactly the same. I used to think exactly the same. I would hate Islam with everything. I would not want in Europe Islam or Muslims or nothing because they're bringing something evil here. Why is it? You know, so I completely understand their perspective. So yeah, it's, it's like strange. Um, and then you, I think you've been to Bosnia, right? Mm -hmm. I see some video and I went to Sarajevo and it's so like mind blowing because those are like Slav people. So they are like same ethnic as me and they're all Muslim. It's like, subhanAllah, like, what is this? Like, it's not that far away. I like seven hours by car. I can drive and like the whole country is Muslim and it's not like far away. This is, this it's in Europe. It's already been here for 600 years or 500. And these people speak the same language, almost Bosniak. They have the same kind of culture, I would say, except drinking, <laughs> but they have the same kind of like Slavic vibe, but they are Muslim. Like what? I couldn't like, you know, like I could relate to them so much. It would be like, and, and, you know, just people don't know, like uh, most people, Polish, Czech, Slovak here, they, they, they don't know that this, this is the case, you know, it's just right here, be, you know, a few miles. So it's crazy, you know. But you know, people people either hate or fear or reject what they don't really know. So yeah. when I was growing back, uh, growing up, I didn't really know Christians. I didn't fear them or hate them, but I was I was like uh, rejectful of them because I didn't have enough knowledge in Christianity. Mm -hmm. My perspective has changed. Is I'm not like loving them, um, but but there is nothing to fear, hate, or reject. You come together and you talk it out. You know. I, I tell people that, you know, uh, I'm in my mid-20s, like, when, when people all my life, they're like, but why can't you eat pork? You know, in Spain, there is a lot of pork culture. They really love their jamón. And I'm like, Zan, please, one time, ask Allah one time to try this, because you will love it. And I'm like, sure, it's probably tasty, but it's not for me. And, yeah. you know, when they say stuff like this, like, in all sort of contexts, I'm like, prove it to me that my religion is false. Like, Learn it and bring me the mistakes. Give me one mistake. Give me one contradiction. Give me one uh, anything, but give it to me and prove it to me that it's false. And if you're ready for the conversation, I will prove it to you that it's right. And then they disappear. <laughs> because because they, they they know that that they will actually have to do an effort to to prove that I'm wrong and then an effort to listen to me. And they don't want to do that. But that's what we got to strive for. You know, we got to have conversations with people because um, it, it's not about making bubbles, you know, like uh, being cut off of people around you. Um, you got to have this conversation when people are ready. Well, you got to try, you know, I'm not like um, like uh, Jesuits that knock on your door like, hey, <laughs> have you ever heard of Allah? Yeah. But if you're ready to have the conversation, <laughs> I'm not going to back away, you know, and I think this is how the people, uh, Muslim people, we should carry ourselves, you know, like, like we shouldn't, I, I know some people that live in bubbles and, and when they, when they are with people that are not Muslim, they, they, 
make themselves small and try to please them, you know, uh, even though they, in their heart, they're, they like know that what I'm going to do is not appropriate, mm-hmm. but they want to fit in and they want, you know, that people don't think that they're closed off or whatever. Uh, I was in this firsthand. So I, I mean, you shouldn't say things like this. Maybe I even did it myself back in, back in the day, but this is not the way to behave as a Muslim, you know? So you got to be conscious and you got to be open enough and, and have the knowledge because if you're a Muslim and you say, oh, I'm a proud Muslim, I don't know much about my religion, but I'm a proud Muslim. Um, and when somebody confronts you like, Hey, I just saw on the news, this happened. And you're like, yeah, but it's not me. That's if that's your answer, then that person is going to still believe these things like, okay, it's, it's not Ali or it's not Abdullah or it's not Muhammad, but <laughs> the, the guy on the TV, there are many, many like him, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, it's yeah. yeah, it's like it's funny that you. Uh, I go through the same things now with my family. Like, why do you pray? Why do you eat, not eat pork or whatever? Um, and it, it's funny because I'm not like um, you know, an Arab or anyone, and I go through the same thing. So it's like you can see being Muslim it has nothing to do with race because like maybe they can say like, okay, these guys don't eat pork because they are like from Pakistan or Arabs, but that's not the reason why you don't do it. You can be a white guy from Bosnia or me or Desi or whoever, and we we don't do it. So there's a different reason for it. And uh, it's funny, like going through it as a revert, the same things as as like people in uh, Muslim countries when they they interact with Westerns. And uh, yeah, it's just hard to explain because like anything you explain doesn't make sense because they need, they don't get who is Allah. So like once you, again, it's like pointless to explain anything because like all the reasons why Muslims do what they do is because Allah said so in the Quran or there's a hadith. How do you explain this? <laughs> you know, like you can give scientific reasons, but that's not enough. Like I, it's not scientific reason why I don't eat pork. Even if science proved that pork is good for you and it's great, the best food ever, I still wouldn't eat it. But the reason is not scientific. So, and that's kind of hard to explain. I think it goes back to like, okay, let me tell you about the Quran, not this pork or why women cover. Let me tell you about like the preservation or, you know, the Tawheed. And these these are more important things than these side questions, you know, I think. I will give you an an example that um, I think it's very interesting also for the people that are watching and... In Barcelona, there are like 100,000, 150,000 Pakistanis, mm-hmm. okay? That's only the Pakistanis. Then you got the Moroccans, other Arabs, Senegalese. You got a lot of Muslims. Like, I would say 300,000 people from 3 million. Okay. And uh, I didn't mix much with any community per se. Like, my, my friends are like Spanish and Latino. Um, but... Uh, when I went into the city, I, I could see Pakistani people that, like I said before, like they were living in a bubble and they, they, they took over neighborhoods. I'm not saying that's bad, but this is one of the things that, you know, the like right wingers or like, uh, I don't know, you can even be left winger, yeah. you know, I'm not right or left, but like people that, that use this as an argument, like, look at them, you know, they, they don't integrate. Mm-hmm. To an extent, it's correct because when I, when I go to Barcelona, I see these streets with, with the, with the, shop signs in Urdu and yeah. even I cannot read Urdu I can read Arabic but I cannot read Urdu it's way more difficult Urdu is the national language of Pakistan and I'm like dude like you're in the middle of Barcelona like the second biggest city iconic city you know Barca um, you got these signs in Urdu uh, <laughs> do you think that if Spanish people immigrated to Islamabad to the capital of Pakistan and they started putting on signs in in Spanish or Catalan <laughs> Like, you would accept this, you know? Or, okay, put it in Urdu, but then half of it, put it in Spanish or whatever. Mm-hmm. They they make, like, these communities, like, really closed off. And uh, I know how they are, you know? Uh, the culture is a little... I don't like Pakistani culture. I don't like many cultures. I don't even like Western culture. Like, every culture has its good things and bad things. I'm not throwing my people under the bus, but yeah. but there's there are things that are wrong, right? And they, they don't mix with the local people. What do I mean by mixing? Like, you got to speak to them. You got to be part of the society. You don't got to behave like them. You gotta, don't got to eat like them. You don't got to go to their churches. But you got to mix with them, you know? Let them know that you 
that you ex exist and you're here to you know live together because when they make these close communities like eventually who knows in 10 15 20 30 years you know history changes very quickly uh people will be like okay <laughs> we got a problem here you know and and you were busy uh within your own community and you're like Whoa, what happened what happened is that you you were closed and you didn't you didn't like you know i don't know give dawa uh or make cultural uh, exchange events or whatever yeah, food exchange you know we got tasty food in pakistan yeah and they just remain closed and and this is in spain like spain from western countries i have lived in france i have lived in luxembourg i live now in germany i visited the uk uh visited the netherlands spain is like a really really open country if muslims cannot do that in spain like like spanish people are the only western people that are like eastern european people because in Eastern Europe, I have friends from Croatia, I have friends from Bosnia, I have friends from Albania. If they love you, or, or my wife is from Lithuania, if they love you or they hate you, they show it, you know, like really openly. They don't have this hidden thing like, hmm, hey, but then they really hate you, you know. I know. I'm they, from if, so, you know, if, if they love you or they hate you, they will say it in your face. They're not politically correct. And Spanish people, um, I've grown up there, it's the only people that I see, like, they're the same as Eastern European people. If they love you or they hate you, they really tell you. And mostly, they don't have a problem with Muslims. Al-Andalus, Al you know, Granada, they had this history for 800 years. Like, look at the U.S., like, it's 200 plus years. And they have this, like, uh, way of acting like they have long traditions. Muslims were 800 years in Spain, like Spanish people and, and the Muslims there, they mixed so much, uh, even when they, when they um, uh, throw out the Muslims from, from, mm -hmm. from Spain back in the day, uh, many people that were Muslim, they, they, they did like the Donme, you know, like, like the Jews during the Ottoman era, they, they said openly that they that were Christians, but actually they were Muslims, they got too mixed after generations and it, it was lost. But you can see that in Southern Spain, especially like people look different, you know? Mm -hmm. So Spanish people are so open and, and Muslims, they're, the way they're doing their communities there, like I think objectively, even as a Muslim, they're not doing it right. And we shouldn't do that in other European countries. Like this is not the approach I would say. Yeah. I think we can do better. I think it's the job of people like you who are born here, not because maybe those guys, they came here already grown up from Pakistan. So they have some background. They don't want to change. Yeah. So, but if you're born, you have different perspective. Like I have completely different because I'm also part, I'm also Slovak fully. So I live that life. So I, I can relate much more than just like on this. And uh, so I think, yeah, it's the, the reverse or the born Muslims who are born in the West have, are more, they can affect more uh, the mindset of people than uh, people who come over, but they already have, they don't want to change. They don't want to assimilate. They just yeah. want to work and just take care of family, but they lose Iman and they lose Islam. They don't care. I mean, that's, that's not good. I think that's very bad. That's just, that's just purely immigrating for the sake of dunya. And uh, I mean, I understand yeah. because we have refugees here in Slovakia, as this, you posted, the Syrians are stuck in the border and stuff and we're helping them out. But uh yeah, um, and of course, they ha might have some economic reasons to come over. They don't uh, particularly maybe need anything else. And I don't judge, actually, because, like, if my country was bombed out, there's no economy. I can't go back. There's no family. Like, what am I going to do in Syria? Uh, how can I build my life? Like, and I can't stay in Turkey. And so I'll go to Germany or whatever. So it's like, I understand that completely. But I also understand the European countries saying, like, well, what what do you want here like we don't want you here you know like this is illegal immigration but you know i don't want to solve this problem it's more complicated yeah, uh, yeah definitely yeah i think uh especially the spanish uh al andalusia and what happened there it's amazing when you start learning um besides islam like core knowledge of islam just islamic history and if you read a few books like what happened in cordoba like thousand years ago they were already having like um, water in the house. So they could do wudu and there would be like floating water. 
everyone would have trash outside of their house and the donkeys would come like a like a trash uh, you know car now yeah they would collect the trash and then go like every morning so the same system as we have now and they would have like uh, yeah the water system the sewages the cities would be nice and clean it's like, sure. and europe like back then europeans were like so barbaric killing everyone like just murdering each other and they had like such an advanced civilization like leading the world in all the sciences in everything you know um and it's like people don't really know this like because they look now in like some war torn piece of muslim country and tell like oh this is islam no it's like there were times where muslims were actually at the top of everything running the world like the us now but um, i mean <clears throat> fell apart so it's crazy like when you start learning as you said like the knowledge i mean of course i don't think everyone can be like scholar i don't think this is like uh, to expect that everyone's going to learn everything it's it's not possible like every day i try to read something or even learning arabic is another way to do you don't have to read research all the time the same thing but reading different things can help and it's just that you have this like firmness on your religion so when because you are attacked all the time you know on tv different people attack you for something and if you don't know how to respond um uh, it's a problem, you know, like if they quote something from the Quran and you don't know the tafsir of that verse and what it meant and in what condition it was revealed, then you get a problem. And you don't know that actually the only way to interpret this verse is through the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, not through your own thinking. Like if you don't have this process behind your way of thinking, you will be like stuck in many problems, uh, explaining different things. Uh, so, yeah, it's just crazy um, that you need a certain level of knowledge for sure. And then build on top of it. And I'm not there at all. But at least I got to a point where I don't question anything. I already know uh, like the foundation is strong. And all the attacks are not doing anything to me. Because I've researched all of this. you know. But many people haven't. And they can fall quickly. Like just they can have yeah. like a big doubt or whatever. And it's just like you just need to research more. Like it may sound on the surface something strange. But like once you dive deep. Actually, it's like amazing what you find with every one of these questions. That's what I my experience was. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we have watched some of your videos, and and actually, I was the first one to watch, and uh, it was really like Slovakia. You know, I had to Google where Slovakia was, yeah. and and it's then after not far away. <laughs> yeah, it's it's nearby. I heard about Slovenia, you know, but I, I didn't know about Slovakia. And, uh, well, much and bigger. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful capital city, actually. Um, and, and really nice videos. And I was like, wow, like, like the, there is not, not even like a big Muslim community. And this brother is, you know, like showing us and, and being so uh, firm in his belief and, you know, putting himself out there because I don't know. But before, you know, because I don't know the country, I just know that, you know, in, in those areas, like, they don't really like Muslims that much. I was like, maybe he will be in danger to showing this, I don't know, some nationalists, maybe, you know, like, <laughs> at least try to scare you off. But uh, I think nothing like that happened. And uh, it's really nice work you're doing. I think, yeah, there are, we are very Islamophobic, like the highest in Europe here, Poland, like, because we have no Muslims, or there are some immigrants, but very small, so um yeah it's it's not ideal but like it's crazy every every week i interact with muslims yesterday was juma we have like a prayer room i had to drive one hour to get there so it's like very there's an effort you have to make but uh it's like you feel like in mecca you know like in the beginning of islam <laughs> you know like uh uh it's good you know because like if i was living in muslim country it would be so easy i would probably relax and just it wouldn't be that difficult and i like the the fact it's more difficult you know slightly more difficult <laughs> no but i can still go to i travel a lot i went to germany i went to munich i've been to cologne the beautiful mosque there in the cologne uh, yeah. yeah that mm -hmm. turkish really mosque beautiful. yeah mm -hmm. yeah i've been to berlin the kreuzberg neighborhood i did a video shoot there um where where was i and munich yeah so it's like Germany is really cool as well. But uh, for me, it's like a fake country. <laughs> Not like fake, but I don't belong there. And it's like everything. I, I don't feel home there at all, even though Islam is better there. But it's just not my culture at all. 
uh, and we don't have good history as well with Germans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Germany is. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. They're they're so like politically correct. Like it's like they don't have any identity, or maybe I'm very. They do, but they 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 hide it because they <laughs> just seventy years ago they weren't politically correct. You know. So, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Sure. But you know, um, my wife she had two incidents. Like she was outside without me. Yes. Mm -hmm. And. Well, I can explain that. Um, I'm not wearing hijab so long time. Yeah. And I was really le learning online during many, many months. And I just went out with him. I didn't mm -hmm. have to do anything. But now my studies are finished. So I just went to the center. Yeah, to the city center. To the city center with hijab, of course. Mm -hmm. And once um, some guy, como se escupir? Uh, spit, spit on her. Spit on my Timberlands. <laughs> on, on her shoes. Yeah. On your shoes? Okay. Yes. Oh. This was one time. And another time, uh, my sister sister was visiting us one day. And um, I... Bueno, explica tú que estaba llevando unos zapatos que me Yeah. Sorry, it's complicated. So we, we went to meet out her sister in our city, right? And uh, her, her feet were hurting. You know, wrong shoes. Uh, happens with women. <laughs> yeah, and I went to the pharmacy to to find some like um, yeah like like some plaster uh, mm -hmm. plaster. So I went away, and she just uh, went to to the restaurant without me. There was only thirty seconds. Yeah, to like, get. yeah, thirty seconds, like yeah. short way. He just left me, and I was I was um, going, and where were two? Well, <laughs> <laughs> there were two. Um, Homosexual, homosexual, homosexual. Yeah, okay. two, two, yeah. <laughs> two, two guys of of that deviation, yeah. <laughs> and uh, they. One was like, you, you never <laughs> said me, what do you want here? And I was like, I'm just walking, you know. Yeah. And I, I was walking like tick 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 tick, you know, because it hurts. <laughs> and he was so he, um, explica, yeah. Simplemente porque me ha visto que que voy con hijab pues no. Yeah, no so, le so the guy just looked at her, you know, uh, spe like, especially at the like, yeah. Like, so he just scanned her and like exactly. was really not feeling that she was wearing a hijab and he's like, what do you want, you know? Mm -hmm. And this never happened. I mean, they were lucky I wasn't there because I would beat them up. Honestly, <laughs> I'm not gonna. Have a problem then. You would have a problem with this girl. <laughs> would, that would have, wouldn't have happened if I was with her, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, the, like these things happen. Like I, I never because I have a sister that wears niqab. She has only her eyes oh, really? visible, okay. and she started wearing that last year. And this is the thing, you know. Like when I'm with her, nothing happens, obviously, or my other brother. But but when women are alone, like you know, some of these people, they you know, they i don't I, I think like they don't have anything better to do and they they really want to you know uh pray on the week yeah. and uh they do that because i mentioned this because uh, mashallah like nothing happened with you but you're a man you know and and muslim women in the west they still go through this stuff you know and not every muslim woman can say it publicly you know because like they just don't say it but this thing happens like mm -hmm. here in germany even though there's like a muslim community like there are still people that hate and these things can happen of course and, um, and i also know a woman she's living also in germany and always she has some kind of incidents like this but in in their here case in, in her, her case, mm -hmm. yeah. it's always with women. So, like an uh, old woman uh, oh. screams in Frankfurt, right? Yes, yes, in Frankfurt, in big city Frankfurt, yeah. you know. Um, gritando them, yeah, they were sc 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 screaming at her like, yeah. in the shops, like, why are you dressed mm -hmm. like this? Mm -hmm. So, these things happen, like, like. Yes, a lot. And I was, I was thinking, no, it, it couldn't happen here in Frankfurt, you know. It's, I don't yeah. know how. <laughs> It's just because of the they don't have enough uh, knowledge or they have some misconceptions, you know. It's it can be cleared. I've seen big Islamophobes turn into Muslims because you just clear out all this garbage they mm -hmm. have in their head. But so it's like I wouldn't I would still prefer like even like you look at the Prophet when he was insulted, he wouldn't beat people up, he would just have a honor and he wouldn't do this. 
uh, it was different. It depends in what context you are. So you look exactly. at the early life of the exactly. Prophet, not the later life when the Muslims were ruling Medina, but early when they weren't. How did he behave in Taif and when they were... It wasn't like he was... He still said, like, even if these people are throwing stones at me, I still hope that they can be mm. here someday. It was my mistake. I didn't convey the message properly. Not their mistake for not understanding. And that's the the level we should have in Europe because we're in that environment. Yeah. We're not in Medina. We're not in Turkey uh, where people can yeah. learn it up. This is not here. So, um, so this is like, it gets like really like crucial to understand this, you know? Because you can easily like provoke Muslims, and then they actually yeah, yeah, the point yeah. of these anti-Muslim people, and they are like, you see, this guy is uh, like uh, aggressive. He just uh, and all this, and you just fall into the stereotype. Yeah, so that's true. Like, yeah, it's like. But I, I tell you, like, uh, like you don't mess with a man's wife, you know. So yeah, it's. it's I mean, the Islamic approach that you say, mashallah, like that's actually the right way, you know, because. Uh, a fighting will not bring you anything but you know the the first reaction if somebody confronts you like that like what do you want yeah <laughs> but yeah that, that's there's also even, right there's even a specific hadith which says uh, when the sahaba were wrestling in the mosque and they mm -hmm. you know this uh hadith i, I think that there, um somebody came and cursed cursed at them no 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 so the, the they were wrestling in the mosque and the prophet walked into the mosque and they were like oh, okay. okay okay we're not wrestling they weren't doing haram like boxing but like wrestling mm -hmm. okay. and they he asked them like what are you doing even though he knows what they're doing and they're like we're wrestling and he's asking like why are you wrestling um and they said like well, why are we wrestling to see who's a better man like to see who's stronger um and then he said like mm. this is not how we determine men the man amongst you is the one who, when calamity happens, he can hold his anger inside and uh, overcome the anger. And that's mm -hmm. a jal, that's a real man. The man who's aggressive, that's not a man. So, and they were like, oh, subhanAllah, they were completely like, uh, because they thought like you need to be strong and masculine, which you need, but still, you know, there's balance. Yeah. You need to have both. Yeah, you gotta balance it. Uh, it's like a very, this hadith really like, I try to go about it. Like my wife tells me sometimes I get angry or something. Um, and because men are more angry, they get more angry, you know. And uh, That's she tells me like, are you Rijal or Dakar now? You know, like, because Dakar is just a man, like just random man. But Rijal is the one who who, who can hold his anger and who can be like mm -hmm. uh, with himself, you know. So that's like really cool as well too. And is your, is your wife also Muslim? I no, she's a, this. she's a Christian. Yeah, she's a Christian. Okay. Uh, okay. We have like a mixed uh, mixed marriage, you know. Okay. Um, yeah, but yeah. she knows a lot. She knows uh, she knows more than normal Muslims, I think, uh, about different hadiths and everything. So I always listen to it, you know. So she's with me in the car. Um, but uh, yeah, I think those girls who are like alone and they get harassed, like they need to get married. <laughs> they need to get married. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, because like it makes sense that uh, especially in Europe they kind of protect you because I don't look Muslim I'm actually white like you can't really tell I'm a Muslim so I'm and I'm a man so it's like the safety level I have versus like a woman covered is completely different you know so no I actually feel like I have a no, duty to do something because I don't have this level of plus I'm an entrepreneur I'm not an employee they can't fire me they can't there's not much I mean you can put me in prison of course but hopefully not but uh you know it's different than if i would be like a woman like in some country without a man i don't know how i would do it like oh uh, yeah so how did yeah, you feel right. when, when you went out first time with like hijab what was was it like strange because i i just had like in sarajevo i had my kufi hat and i dressed like properly for ramadan and that was the first time i ever publicly like people could see all oh, these guys muslim it never happened to me so i was like but i was in muslim country so i was like yeah <laughs> and we went to dinner everybody knew okay this is iftar but here i don't know if i would like i don't know how i would do it especially here so what was your feeling going out there like first time maybe with a headscarf well or... first time first time i think it was in no, dubai in Dubai, well, it was first time, so it was really okay. <laughs> yeah. And um, and then it was in Spain, so I was more uh, tenía más confidence. She was more confident mm -hmm. because, yeah, of course, I was also with his family, so it wasn't mm. strange. But 
yeah, so first time here alone, <laughs> this is what happened, <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'm now I'm estoy más tranquila, no, no hay ningún problema. Yeah, she's more, sí, sí, lo que tengo que hacer y... she's more calm about it and not scared or anything. Yeah, because I know what I have to do, so um, Dios está más importante para mí. Y eso, so, yeah. She just said that yeah. God is more important for me than what people think. Exactly. So. Exactly. Yeah, I think most people who do this, like they are very easily, you can just confront them. Like, what did you just say? And they just shut up because they can't, they don't want this uh, confrontation. They think they can have one up on you because you're a woman or you, you, you feel weak even as a man, you don't say anything. But if my friend, he's not a Muslim, but he's like a, a Vietnamese American living in Prague and he would get like racist comments and he would all the time just turn around and he would just face like, well, did, what did you just say? Say it to my face and they would just leave. They would just be very scared. And like you do this, you just say like, I mean, it's it's not pleasant because, you know, but if you just ask them, they, they just go away because those people are cowards usually. So, uh, you know, but yeah, I understand it's not nice. Yeah, people like to pray on the weak, you know, so they see a woman alone, you know, a man seeing a woman alone is already, you know, a power dynamic is different. And when they see a Muslim woman, they, they think that they're even weaker, you know, yeah, yeah. and and they, they ah, this is my chance to be a macho racist or hate monger or whatever. So they, but yeah, it, it happens. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And so, yeah, I also like recently, I want to start with this documentary series going around Europe and filming different places just to show people that, uh, with like a crew of people uh, where we produce like really good videos. So like going to Poland, there's a mosque there from Tatars mm -hmm. built by uh, this guy who did, who fought Turks, but he built a mosque. Uh, then, In which city? Uh, it's like a very small city near Bialystok. This is like a town and uh, okay. it's on the border of Belarus. And there's a mosque there, a uh, wooden mosque. And uh, it was built by a guy, Jan Sobielski, who actually fought the Ottomans. And he's like a hero for these like uh, extreme far right guys. But he ordered the build of a mosque for Tatars who helped him fight the Turks because Tatars joined Polish because they were living there. So under Shari, they were kind of like, we can't, I mean, they shouldn't fight the Muslims, but we, we live here and they're attacking us like Ottomans were conquering. So they helped the Polish to and Europeans to win. So they built a mosque, the most anti- uh, far far right hero built a mosque in Poland and it's still there and there's a graveyard you can find um, so it's like fascinating like people don't know like I want to show that and there's still some community of Tatars living in that north Poland near where you maybe have mm -hmm. like also some uh, Tatars I mean they lost their identity completely because they it kind of integrated uh, and uh, but still yeah. they, they have something there and there's different places around Europe, like in Hungary, there's so many Islamic uh, things uh, which are lost, of course. Uh, and uh, in Vienna, in uh, different places around here. So uh, I just, and also Spain, like, uh, so hopefully we'll make some cool videos uh, and uh, just Inshallah. specifically Europe and Islam and just showing real places, uh, going there and looking like, look, this is here. It's nothing strange. Um but yeah, so guys, it was really great uh, speaking with you. Um, mm -hmm. I know it's like lunchtime, so uh, maybe <laughs> maybe you're hungry. So uh, <laughs> let's uh, stay in touch. Thank you so much. And uh, if somebody is watching you, do you have any uh, any final thoughts? Or and if somebody is listening or watching, go subscribe to Desi's channel, which is linked, so you can see her uh, next videos. Do you have any final? Thoughts, final piece of advice for maybe reverts, uh, Desi, like uh, someone as a woman, especially in Europe? Yes, of course. Um, firstly, um, no te presures para llevar el hijab, sino no puedes. Don't feel pressure to wear the hijab uh, immediately if you're not ready for it. Like, don't let, don't think that there's so much pressure, like slowly, you know? You must feel it. So this this moment will come. You just read more, uh, dedicate more time to Quran or Hadiths or to watch videos about uh, Islam. Also, mm -hmm. everything will help you to to and um, because 
no es, ¿cómo se dice esto? No es la, no es la jornada, ¿Cómo se, ¿cómo se dice? No es el camino. No es el camino, sino es la jornada entera. So she's like, um, saying like, it's, it's not, um, it's not about the journey, but the end. So like the journey can be quicker or slower, but, but you gotta be on the right path. So just steadfast. You will make it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's great advice um yeah so thank you so much for for being here just here and uh let's uh, stay in touch and uh hopefully if you guys come to slovakia or czech republic or any area here let me know i know everybody so we can uh, <laughs> meet up or you know if we go to germany or something okay sure all right perfect assalamu alaikum, alaikum